I'm just removing some nails from this here wood. The story that I'm going to tell you today is from this book by Andrew Lang. Uh, as with many stories, it's slightly different to that version. And the reason I learnt it was for an event that Spinning Yarns did for Valentine's Day called Love Bites. There was once a king. A king who deeply wanted to marry a princess. However, she was under a curse that meant she could marry no one. The king searched high and low for someone or something that could break the curse. And he learnt that the princess had a cat who she was very fond of. And if he could stand on the cat's tail, he could break the curse. Well, the king spent a lot of time in the company of the princess and she in the company of the cat. So it wasn't long. He saw the cat. He lifted his foot high above the tail and forced it down. The tail was gone. Only air and ground that his foot landed on. He tried again, and again, and again. He got so frustrated with this cat that he said if he could get that tail, he would grind it into a powder. For eight whole days he tried, and on the ninth day, the cat was sleeping soundly in a corner with the tail conveniently spread out. The king saw it. He jumped on the opportunity by jumping on the tail. The cat yelped out in pain and transformed into a wizard that locked angry eyes at the king. You have released the curse of the princess and you can marry her. However, you must take the curse to your child. Your son will not be happy until he realises how long his nose is. And if you tell anyone what I've told you here today, you will vanish. And with that, he was gone. The king thought it was a strange curse from a strange man. Surely, if his child had a long nose, he'd realise. Well, you can imagine what happened next. The king and the princess married, and the new queen was soon pregnant with child. And when the childbirth came, it was so traumatic. For whilst the baby had striking blue eyes and soft, pale lips and dainty ears, he had a gigantic nose, a ginormous nose that was so big, it almost covered the child's face. When the queen saw it, she shrieked in horror and vowed not to look at her child again. Until her ladies reassured her that it was a Roman nose. Uh, a perfectly natural nose. And the next time the queen looked at it, it wasn't all that bad. For the early years of this new prince's life, he found himself surrounded by portraits of people through history who had long noses. The Queen made sure that anyone who visited him had a significant nose. It got so bad that some of the courtiers, to stay in favour with the Queen, took to stretching the noses of their children in hope that they'd get longer. When the Prince turned 20, he took a walk around the grounds of the Kingdom and he saw the most beautiful girl. She happened to be a princess from a nearby kingdom. Just like him, she had striking blue eyes, soft pale lips, dainty ears. Yet unlike him, she had a tiny petite nose. He wondered how someone so perfect could have such a strange abnormality. He didn't mind and he got to know her. All the servants who saw them together would point and laugh at her very small nose. 
until the prince had had enough and dismissed those servants who were rude to this princess. The servants were conflicted. The queen was telling them that they had to point and laugh at people with small noses, but here was the prince courting one of them. They took to taking a vow of silence to cover all bases. The prince and the princess from another kingdom got closer and closer until the day came the prince put on a romantic gesture. There was a string quartet playing, there were dancers all around him. All of the kingdom turned up for the moment they were going to lock lips. And as they drew in close, there was a whistling of wind and whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Immediately in front of them, the wizard appeared. He grabbed the princess and disappeared. The prince was heartbroken. He got on his horse and he rode away, vowing not to return to this kingdom. On he went for many days and many nights with no sense of direction. He kept going until something more superior than him took over his stomach. He found himself getting so hungry that he had to quench his desire. So he stopped at a nearby cabin that had some smoke gently coming out of a chimney. It perhaps was a cottage. He knocked on the door and it opened. And there was an old lady who was squinting at him until she reached down for her spectacles and placing them on her head, they fell down again. For you see, this lady had barely a nose. It was like a little, a little jutting out of her face. Well, she finally got the spectacles on. At the same time, the prince saw how strange her nose was. And together, they said, Ha ha ha! You have a ridiculous nose! The prince thought this was strange. She was the one with the odd nose, not him. How he could not see the truth which was in front of him. He explained to the old lady that he had been travelling for many a day and who he was. And when the old lady realises, she said, Ah, I know your father. He's the king now, isn't he? We go way back. Come in, come in, and I'll tell you all about him. The prince came into the little cabin, and he was not offered food, drink, or even a seat before the old lady started telling these strange stories about the king. They seemed to have no relevance to anything. They were really about her. She went on and on and on like a broken record until the prince said, okay, look, it's, it's lovely to hear about my father. My horse is outside and just like me, he is hungry and thirsty. Unlike me, he has horse's ears. So he cannot hear these wonderful stories you're telling. Could you just sort him out? And the old lady snapped out of this bubble that she was in. She called for her servant to come. And immediately food was placed out for the prince and for the horse outside. They ate initially in silence. The old lady could not resist. Your nose, could you just move your face to the other side it's blocking out the sun i've got a drawer up there that i can't reach could, could you grab it with your nose your nose is so ridiculous enough thank you for the food and looking after my horse you are rude i have to say good day to you and he jumped on his horse and he was off on he went to the next kingdom, and there he found that all of the people pointed and laughed at his nose. Until it got so bad he had to leave and go to the next kingdom. And there everyone laughed at his nose in the next kingdom. They laughed at his nose, next kingdom. He thought 
everywhere had gone mad that his kingdom was the only sane one. As he was travelling, he heard that the princess he loved dearly was captive in a crystal palace, a short journey away just across the river. So he headed there. The wizard had built the building in such a way that the prince could break into it. Though the cages inside were completely sealed. So he could see the princess in front of him. There were bars blocking him from getting near to her. He grabbed her hand and said, I will get you out of this. And then we will return to my kingdom and we will be married. And he went down to kiss her hand, but as he did so, he couldn't quite reach it because of his nose and he dropped it and said, why? 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 Have I been cursed with this ridiculously long nose? Why couldn't I have one that was smaller, like this beautiful girl in front of me? Or the old lady who told me strange stories about my father? Why? Why? And in that moment, the Crystal Palace erupted into shards of glass. The prince stood there, protecting himself as they reigned around him, and when they had stopped, he looked, and there was the beautiful girl, completely unharmed. He grabbed his face in shock and joy, and found that he had no giant nose no more. It was small and petite, just like hers. He grabbed her. They went on the horse, and they returned to the kingdom, and they were wed instantly. The whole kingdom came. They all wanted to see the prince who had been gone for so long. During the wedding, the prince made a beautiful speech that ended like this. Self-love keeps us from knowing our own defects of mind and body. Reason tries to show it to us, but we refuse to see it until it gets in the way of our own interests. The prince had learnt a valuable lesson, and he lived with his new bride and their tiny petite noses happily ever after.